Good morning, everybody. Great to be back. So this is my annual update for uh, our desktop solutions. So hopefully you enjoyed the ride. We're going to do hybrid this year as it is PCD, so uh, Rebecca will be doing a demo for us shortly. So yeah, so it's great to be back. Um, I'm obviously Nick, this is Rebecca. Um, we're from down south in Toronto, Ontario. Don't often get to come up north for a US conference. So yeah, so I'll start with an update on what's new in Map Publisher and Geographic Imager, as well as some updates on what we've made pro to products side by side. So Map Publisher, as Gene mentioned earlier, is our extension for Adobe Illustrator. Geographic Imager is our, is our extension for Photoshop. So I'll talk about updates to both of those uh, software products. I'll talk about some universal changes we've made to both. And then, obviously, Rebecca will do her demo after I've spoken. So firstly, I'd like to spotlight your selection of improvements and new features we've made recently since last year's NASIS. So we've now been able to add a show all features mode to our attribute viewer, which enables you to highlight art by selecting in the attribute table. Once features are highlighted, you can right click on any row to select highlighted features, as well as additional options such as adding or removing against current selections, deleting artwork, or perform edits you would previously complete in the edit schema dialog. You can also create new map selections for later use. So we really hope you'll find this new functionality will improve your workflows. You can now import the topo JSON format and extensive GeoJSON that encodes topology. Rather than representing geometries discreetly, geometries in topo JSON files are stitched together from shared line segments. This feature was released in version 10.9. We understand that finding data can often be difficult depending on where you are located. In version 11 of Map Publisher, you can now import data downloaded from your favorite OpenStreetMap server directly into Illustrator with all attributes and georeferencing intact. We did have an interesting use case. This was from a few years ago. I think Tom Harrison may be here somewhere. Um, our vector crop tool allows you to crop arts to an area using specified coordinates, while the crop to shape crops based on a selected area. The alternate use case was to inversely crop based, basically deleting art inside specified coordinates or as a selected area. So these screenshots are a little bit dated. Um, we actually named this feature Erase in the Map Publisher 11 release. So when you click Inverse Crop to Shape and choose all layers in the document, all data within that shape are deleted. You can also specify coordinates to inversely crop to either by input manually or by using existing map locations. So now to improvements we've made recently to Geographic Imager over the last year. Our Terrain Shader tool allows users to create dramatic shader relief visualizations with elevation data. With the 6.5 release of GI, we have added a document blending mode option. When the Apply Overlay Image option is now selected as a colorization schema, users can select from a range of native Photoshop blending modes that improve how imagery layers are overlaid with elevation data. So users can now store embedded geo-referencing within Photoshop's native file format. With this significant improvement to geographic imager, you can now include adjustment layers, layer masks, annotations, file information, keywords, and other Photoshop-specific elements, all with geo-referencing intact in the PSD or PSB format. So now to improvements we made recently to both uh, Map Publisher and Geographic Imager. This is all the common code that we've changed. Um, so yeah, so as many of you are aware, with our fall 2021 releases, we have removed compatibility with Adobe CS6. Anybody running Map Publisher with CS6 still? No. Good. Oh, there's one at the back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, so CS6 was originally released in 2012. Um, we have ensured that our desktop products are compatible with it for each release over the last 10 years because we know it was still being used. But our development unit has been held back a lot of the time based on the fact that we haven't been able to leverage uh, new functionality within, within Adobe. So by discontinuing this support, we were better able to, to increase our compatibility with Adobe's new functionality, improve the user experience all around. So our model now, going forward, would be compatibility with the latest Adobe, plus one version back only. So as many of you know, it's Adobe Max this week, so they've already released their uh, new versions, so we will be pushing um, an updated map publisher and geographic imager in the coming weeks. And obviously they'll be compatible with the uh, coming soon information that you see there. 
Um, OS compatibility, um, yeah, so obviously the removal of CS6, we've also removed compatibility on a Mac OS 1014, which was the last Mac OS you could technically run CS6 on. Also with the addition of Windows 11 as a supported platform and low usage of Windows 7, with our customers, we made the decision to remove Windows 7 as a supported OS also. So these supported operating system changes were made in the Map Publisher 10.9 and GI 6.5 releases. And then we also removed Mac OS 10.15 in Map Publisher 11, which came out in August. Okay. So a lot of you have been asking me about this one um, over the last day, so we had to do significant work on our underlying libraries and integration of required updates and external libraries to support M1. So we do thank you all for your patience. Um, we have full native support in Map Publisher 11, and M1 support will be in GI 6.6, which is coming soon, hopefully next month. Um, with, the, with the backing of the US military specifications published in 2014, GeoPackage has been widespread support from various government, commercial, and open source organizations. Support for the import and export of vector GeoPackages was added in Map Publisher 10.9 and GI 6.5. Uh, welcome screen, so onboarding experience, we put a lot of work into um, how you, existing customers, new customers get information on what's new, um, links to user stories, all that kind of jazz, so that is in the current release and that will follow obviously in 6.6 for GI as well. So I guess finally for me, um, there is a focus group on Friday, so we are anticipating releasing a very exciting new feature in the new year, early new year, January, February. Um, so if um, any of you are interested, I guess looking for map publishing power users, people who are just interested in the products in general, um, you are more than welcome to join, um, except if you work for a company with four letters in its name. <laughs> okay, hand it over to Rebecca. Sorry I keep moving the mic, everybody. I, d I don't know why, it's very fidgety. Okay, so I'm going to give you a demo, a quick demo of a map that I put together using Map Publisher. This is not the finished map, don't worry. Um, so as noted in my introduction, I really love mail. And I'm part of a postcard exchange group. Um, and most of the users are in America. So if anyone here uses Post Crossing, I am also a Post Crosser. Um, and I was inspired by a trend in 2018 called the subway subway maps and the subway subway maps were maps that people made using subway restaurant locations to make subway maps and you can search this subreddit I swear it's there there are in and out maps and any other fast food you can find and the best part is when they're showing like in and out Colorado and there aren't any so it's just an empty map but you know so I opted to use my love for mail to make a subway postal map. But what this really is, is a Toronto's um, post fantasy postal delivery map. So actually, this is not insanely far-fetched because in London, they had a railway postal system that ran from 1927 to 2003. I don't know if anybody knew that, but now it's a museum. So if you go, you can sit on the trains and they'll drive you around to where they used to send mail. So this was my inspiration for this map, and I'm gonna go over some of the tools that I used um, to show you how I did it. So first off, I imported a, ba a major streets file for Toronto, um, just to get my bearings, well, get the map bearings realistically, um, to get my post office location. So actually in Canada, we have a lot of post offices within pharmacies. So when I used the uh, find places tool, not a lot of them came up because they're not recognizing it, they're recognizing it as Shoppers Drug Mart, but there is a post office in there. So I used the find places tool to get majority of my post offices but I also used uh, Overpass Turbo to pull in some extra ones that didn't come through, as well as the Point Plotter tool. And ever since I started using Map Publisher, the Point Plotter tool has been my tool. You know you have one tool that you always go to? For some reason, that's mine. So I ended up pulling the manual addresses from the Canada Post website and using the Point Plotter, which put them in accurately, um, to get them on the map to make sure that I'd filled out all of my areas. And so once I did that, I took some 
creative liberty, and I mean a lot of creative liberty, to add in my lines. So I have 16 railway systems, um, and I'm going to turn them on for you here. And forgive me, I'm looking back at the map, um, but there, they should be coming on. No, there we go. They'll start to come on. Um, and I drew them in manually with the pen tool, which was a lot of fun, as you can imagine. Um, just to give you some idea, and, and I based them off of major landmarks and major uh, intersections that I knew in the city, and also major stations. So realistically, we would put our main post office at our main transit station, because that's how it would come in, which is down in the south here. Um, so I would draw these in and connect them, and some of them are actually based on present subway lines we already have. So if you think, you could just see a little mail cart behind your subway car when you're going to work in the morning. No shame. Um, and after that, I used the map themes, which is stuck on the other window, um, to bring in my labels for my stations. Um, so what I did is I set up a Boolean attribute if it's an interchange station or if it's just a regular station. And it was quite easy to um, put it together. This is driving me bananas. Okay, there we go. Um, so we can see here I have stations and then I have interchanges. So I set them just to be different symbols so it's easy to I, uh, differentiate what they are. And we can see in the rule here that I have it set for station or interchange. So if we apply it, um, we can see that they've been put in so that the different interchange stations are there. Or not, oh, there we go. Anyway, um, this is kind of how it came through in the beginning of the map. Um, and after I put this together, I'm gonna flip to the next one. Um, I opted to color in my lines and I started to manually put them to the correct points. Uh, roughly following the same line. Obviously, it's not a perfect subway map, but this is in my imagination. Um, and this would be easier to take cars off the road, to send mail through the trains, et cetera, et cetera, having fun with it. And you can see my street lines in the back. And when I actually came to label it, um, we'll go back to the finished map, I used Label Pro, but in order to get the correct station names, I had to get the neighborhoods correct. And Toronto has over 170 neighborhoods and I had to check the files back and forth to ensure that they were correct. So what I actually did and I found quite easy is I imported the neighborhoods file over top of my stations and I labeled the neighborhoods file itself so I could easily match the attributes to ensure that we were getting the correct information and that we weren't having, say, Union Station, which is our main hub down there, up in the north, which would make no sense. So I set everything up using Label Pro and it was quite easy to do so once I get this window over to show you, um, and I put all of my lines in as obstacles, and then I labeled my interchanges and stations differently based on the importance. So the interchanges are bolded and slightly bigger, and then the stations are just a smaller font. So once I set this up, labeling my map literally took five seconds, and it's super easy to use Label Pro to label your maps. And then once I was done, I just manually moved a few things that didn't uh, come in properly, and I added in my legend. And yeah, that is my fantasy postal map. So we hope that if you have any questions, you can come see Nick or myself. We will be around. Um, we'll be around all week. So thank you.